So now we're going to take our base, which looks like a disc at this point, and we're going to add our first coil to it. Now you can see it's still pancake thick, and I've taken the liberty of adding a design to it. I carved in 2020 for funsies, and um, my initials, my official logo, TN. Now to do a coil, to create your first coil, and all your coils actually, you're gonna wanna work directly on a tabletop and have a cup of water handy and a sponge. Um, Wipe down your tabletop with a damp sponge. You need moisture in your hands when creating a coil and you need moisture on your tabletop. So you want to work on a board as I am doing if possible or directly on a table, not newspaper and do not work on top of plastic. So this could be a little messy on your table surface. Um, I'm going to use the scrap clay I created in the last video. That's going to be enough for my first coil and that was produced when I was making the disc or the base of the container. And then I've got the rest of my cube, which is gonna produce many more coils as well. I'm gonna keep that wrapped so it doesn't dry out off to the side. I'm gonna keep the base of the container, that disc, off to the side as well, so it can toughen up a little bit. When you begin a coil, you wanna start with a ball and the size of the ball should be about mm, jawbreaker candy size, a little smaller than a golf ball, basically. And you wanna have moisture in your hands, as I stated before, constantly. You'll see me do this uh, technique a lot. And we're gonna use the natural curvature of our palms to help form the coil. Remember, a coil is a long rope of clay. And this is a very ancient technique you're about to see too. So all I'm doing is rolling the uh, clay from kind of the, my wrist area or the bottom of my palm all the way to my fingertips. So here, here it is in slow motion. So just do this a couple times back and forth. I'm applying a little bit of pressure, but I'm not hulking out. Now when that coil starts to emerge and it becomes wider than your palm, that's when you stop working kind of up in the air and you start working on your tabletop. Again, make sure you have moisture on one palm. I'll use two palms later, but for right now, start with one palm on your tabletop. And you're basically gonna do a sweeping motion. You're gonna have your coil interact with your palm only, not fingertips, we'll use fingertips later. You're gonna apply a little bit of pressure while sweeping your hand from side to side. You're moving left to right, constantly keeping that hand on the move. You don't want to linger in one spot for too long while rolling out your coil, or you're going to create a flat area or a dented coil. So light pressure and sweep from side to side, left to right, constantly moving that hand. You're going to start to feel tired after a while. That's normal. And when you feel really tired, that's when it's time to introduce your second hand, which I'll do in just a second here. But right now I'm still using the palm of my dominant hand. I'm a lefty, so you're seeing my left hand. Now I'm here I'm starting to feel tired, so it's that's how I know it's time to introduce my right hand. So I've got moisture on both palms. I want you to overlap one hand on top of the other. It could be your right hand on top of your left or vice versa, either or, whatever feels comfortable. Both palms are about to come into contact with the coil, not fingertips yet, just palms only. And I'm gonna start in the center of the coil and then my hands are gonna separate. So both palms touch the coil in the center of the coil and you kind of roll and separate your hands. And then you meet back in the middle and roll and separate. Add moisture as needed, meet back in the middle, roll and separate your hands. So I've got a coil emerging, it's pretty decent. There's some like chunky fat areas I need to focus in on and I'm gonna do that with one palm only. So I'm gonna purposely ignore the thin areas and focus on the fat chunky areas. You want your coil to be a little fatter than a pencil. So pencil thin is too thin, but we, we want the coil a little fatter than a pencil. 
And if you have areas that are too fat, as I do right now, that's where you kind of zoom in and edit that portion of the coil. So it's looking better. One end is slightly skinnier than the other end, that's okay. So I'm trying to kind of even out the coil. Now, for final touch up of the coil, you can use your fingertips. So you can kind of finish off the coil with fingertips only. Save fingertip work for the very, very end when your coil is looking decent and you just wanna kind of finalize it. And you, you can even use both hands, the fingertips of both hands. And again, have your hands touching and then separate them. So you kind of roll and separate your hands. Now you'll know that your coil is a keeper when you can bend it into a horseshoe shape and it doesn't crack.